Hello, and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Matt Leteplo, and on behalf of OTC Markets, we're very pleased you have joined us for our next live presentation from Atire Pharma, Inc. Before I introduce our speaker, a few points to note. Please submit your questions in the question box at the left of the slides. If you are interested in scheduling a meeting with Atire Pharma, please click on the Meetings tab found on the left navigation bar. You will be able to view the company's availability and submit a meeting request. On a final note, all of today's presentations will be recorded and available for 24-7 replay. At this point, I am very pleased to welcome Ashley Dunstan, Director of Investor Relations and Corporate Communications at Atire Pharma, Inc., which trades on NASDAQ under the symbol LIFE. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you very much, and I'm thrilled to be here today to tell you a little bit more about Atire Pharma, where we are working to chart a new path to medicine. Throughout the presentation today, I will be making a few forward-looking statements, so please refer to some of our recent SEC filings for additional information. At Atire, uh, our mission is to translate discoveries from our tRNA synthetase platform into new therapeutics for fibrosis, inflammation, and cancer. We have really established a disruptive technology platform that is first in class in tRNA synthetase biology and working to derive new medicines from this natural biology that we all have in our bodies. We are the farthest along, along among companies working to harness tRNA, and we have an IP portfolio with more than 200 patents covering all of the 20 tRNA synthetases that we have in our body with various hundreds of proteins, splice variants, and fragments coming under those patents. We have demonstrated clinical proof of concept for our lead therapeutic candidate, Efsofitamod, which is der derived from one of the 20 tRNA synthetases, a tRNA synthetase called HARS. And we believe that that clinical proof of concept data validates the platform and the novel drug discovery approach that we've applied to develop it. Beyond Efsofitamod, we are leveraging this technology platform to create a diversified pipeline with multiple target indication and, in and approaches either in preclinical development or the research and discovery uh, stage. When we look at Efsofitamod, uh, we believe there is a large market opportunity for this novel immunomodulator in interstitial lung disease or ILD particularly three areas of ILD, sarcoidosis, connective tissue disease, ILD, and chronic hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, we estimate could be a $2 to $3 billion market opportunity for Efsofitamod. When you look at sarcoidosis, we're really the farthest along among limited competitors with not much else in the pipeline. We've received U.S. orphan drug designation and fast track designations for sarcoidosis and systemic sclerosis, which is an ILD uh, form of scleroderma. And we have initiated a global pivotal phase three study of Efsofitamod and sarcoidosis called Efsofit. And we are ready to go into phase two studies in uh, some of those other ILD that I mentioned. When we think about how we're leveraging our disruptive technology platform and advancing Efsofitamod, that's really driven by strong financials and investor support. We have uh, some top shareholders with strong biotech funds, including funds like Federated, Fidelity, and Venrock, and uh, strong support with insider ownership um, and buying from uh, not just our founder, but our management team as well. Beyond our cash position, uh, which was roughly $90 million at the end of the second quarter, uh, we have a strong balance sheet with no debt and a partnership with Kirin Pharmaceuticals in Japan for Efsofitamod for interstitial lung disease there with a total deal value of uh, up to $175 million, which we have received $10 million in my milestone payments as well. 
When we think about the development pipeline at ATIRE, as I mentioned, it's really largely focused at this time on Fsofitamod, which we believe can be a strong candidate in multiple areas of interstitial lung disease, but notably the lead indication being pulmonary fibrosis. Additionally, we have other pipeline candidates advancing as well, including um, some in oncology and early stage in the areas of uh, inflammation. When we think about our technology platform, it is really based on tRNA synthetase biology. And the science comes out of the lab at the Scripps Research Institute and Dr. Paul Schimmel, who is a renowned biochemist and well-known biotech entrepreneur. He has founded some other rather transformative biotech companies like Alnylam, Alkermes, Cubis that have been quite successful. But his life's passion and the legacy have, of his work has really been around um, the scientific discovery that he made that uh, we all have these tRNA synthetases in our bodies that normally work within the cell to do kind of just like a normal a normal job to uh, create proteins. Um, that's what we refer to as the intra intracellular function of tRNA synthetases. What Dr. Schimmel discovered is that for some reason, we don't know why, these tRNA synthetases break apart into fragments and splice variants with, in some instances, an, an active domain on them. They migrate out of the cell and uh, through local tissue systems, that's what we refer to as the ex extracellular function, and seem to play a role in uh, modulating our uh, immune response or playing some role in tissue or disease homeostasis and regulation. And what Dr. Schimmel discovered is that these um, tRNA synthetases could correspond to different tissue, tissue systems in our body and may play a role in some disease. Um, our first uh, therapeutic candidate that we have been working to follow this biology is derived from one of these 20 tRNA synthetases called HARS, and that is the tRNA synthetase upon which Fsofitamod is, is based. And the HARS tRNA synthetase is highly enriched in lung tissue. And so that is what has led us to evaluating Fsofitamod as a potential candidate in a lung disease such as uh, interstitial lung disease. And we believe based on some of the um, recent clinical proof of concept data that we've generated in pulmonary sarcoidosis, that it really validates this tRNA synthetase biology as one that we could potentially drug. It's validated our platform as one that can generate um, uh, receptor targets for some of these tRNA synthetases and potentially create medicines. Let's talk a little bit about Fsofitamod, uh, which is a novel immunomodulator for fibrotic lung disease. First, we'll talk a little bit about the disease area that we believe um, Fsofitamod can play, can play a unique role, and that is interstitial lung disease. It's a group of immune-mediated fibrotic lung diseases with poor outcomes. There are more than 200 types of ILD, yet the four main types of ILD actually comprise around 80% of the ILD patients. Some people familiar with ILD may know uh, IPF, a severe form, uh, severely fibrotic disease. We believe that Fsofitamod actually impacts the inflammatory state of this biology and therefore is uh, applied to some of the more inflammatory forms of ILD, such as sarcoidosis, connective tissue disease ILD, and chronic sensitivity pneumonitis. In some of these non-IPF ILD that I just mentioned, um, they still have very poor, poor outcomes. And even though they are more inflammatory phenotypes, fibrosis occurs and progresses in more than 20% of those patients. In all of these non-IPF ILD, there are limited treatment options, and we believe represent a $2 to $3 billion in market opportunity. Our lead indication for pulmonary sarcoidosis or for epsifitamod is pulmonary sarcoidosis, which as you can see on the previous slide is actually the most prevalent ILD. Sarcoidosis is an inflammatory disease of unknown etiology. That just means we don't actually know what causes it, but uh, the hallmark characteristic is uh, the presence of granulomas or clumps of immune cells in one or more organs of the body. 
when we think about pulmonary sarcoidosis, that's when sarcoidosis affects the lungs, and the lungs are affected in more than 90% of all patients who have sarcoidosis. One in five patients with sarcoidosis will develop lung fibrosis with significantly worsening prognosis, and there's not really much to treat it. Uh, standard of care that exists is actually uh, primarily corticosteroids, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but is based on limited clinical evidence and associated with significant toxicity. Therefore, there are uh, two primary reasons to treat sarcoidosis. Number one being to avoid danger to organs, in this case, primarily the lungs, and to improve the quality of life. There are around 200,000 patients in the U.S. with sarcoidosis because of that. Uh, the U.S. Uh, FDA, FDA has granted orphan drug designation for sarcoidosis. And based on our strong preclinical data and clinical proof of concept, we have also received fast track designation for uh, epsofinimod for the treatment of pulmonary sarcoidosis. The current standard of care for pulmonary sarcoidosis has limited, limited evidence of efficacy and very poor safety. Um, when we look at some of the treatments that are currently being used, uh, those include corticosteroids, which is you know, one of the only treatments FDA approved for sarcoidosis. Uh, while, while steroids can be effective at managing the inflammation of the disease, it actually comes with quite a bit of toxicity and side effects such as weight gain, mood disorders, bone density, exacerbation of diabetes, diabetes and the list goes on. Very much an instance of the treatment is just as or if not worse as the disease itself. Beyond steroids, some patients will be, be treated with um, other immunosuppressive agents and immuno immunomodulators, again, all of which are not FDA approved for sarcoidosis and come with their own side effects and risks. So based on that, we believe that there is a large market opportunity um, in sarcoidosis alone among, among some of the other ILDs. Uh, as I mentioned, there are roughly 200,000 patients in the US living with sarcoidosis. Um, in major European countries, that's about 150,000. And then in Japan, where we have um, our partner Curin, there are roughly 20,000 um, patients. When you look at how patients are treated, some patients um, resolve on their own and actually don't require any, any treatment. And then there is a portion of patients that are adequately uh, controlled on steroids, and then those that progress uh, despite um, uh, being treated with, scare with steroids, which is really what we look at as our core target population, those patients at risk for progression who have been treated with steroids. And then we do view, there's, view that there's another upside target population where those being treated with you know, adequately with steroids, but still suffering from severe side effects might have the opportunity to uh, have a steroid reduction or steroid sparing agent. All in, we view the uh, target population for epsofinimod and sarcoidosis in these major markets at roughly 150,000 to 200,000 patients. When we think about what we've shown and demonstrated with epsofinimod thus far, compared to some other rare disease um, indications and uh, treatments there. Some of the other ILD treatments and uh, the, the premium pricing that they garner um, have been shown to slow lung function decline, but not really any increase in quality of life parameters. Um, some other agents um, for other rare diseases have shown some steroid sparing effects, and some of the uh, biologic immunomodulators do get used off-label in sarcoidosis. Based on some of those benchmarks and comparisons, considering that we believe if sofitamod could be the first approved product for a major ILD, notably sarcoidosis, that uh, reduces steroids, preserves lung function, and improves patient quality of life. We believe that it's looking like it could uh, support uh, premium pricing for esofitamod. Beyond sarcoidosis, our preclinical data and proof of concept and overlap in disease pathology really supports potentially expanding um into other ILDs with high unmet need, notably connective tissue disease related ILD, uh, which is ILD that is secondary to autoimmune diseases such as scleroderma or RA, where there are also um, limited treatment options or standard of care similar to sarcoidosis, and ILD is 
the leading cause of mortality, and also a disease such as chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis that also has limited standard of care and poor outcomes. Uh, recently, we um, have received uh, FDA orphan drug designation for systemic sclerosis, also known as scleroderma, and fast track designation for uh, ILD associated with scleroderma as well. So let's talk a little bit about Fsofitamod, which is a first-in-class therapy for immune-mediated lung disease. Um, it's a novel FC fusion protein therapy that targets the innate and adaptive immune cells during active inflammation to restore immune balance. Um, Fsofitamod selectively binds to NRP2, which is a cell surface receptor involved in uh, immune response. We have shown anti-inflammatory and anti-fibrotic effects in multiple preclinical animal models of ILD. And we have shown uh, clinical safety um, and some uh, dose-dependent disease control effects in pulmonary sarcoidosis thus far. Our therapeutic uh, hypothesis for Fsofitamod is to restore the immune balance and prevent prevent the prog progression of fibrosis. Really what happens is there's some type of disease trigger. We don't really know the etiology of sarcoidosis. Um, it could be caused by um, some type of environmental or inorganic exposure or an infectious disease exposure or something autoimmune, but it really triggers this aberrant immune response where the immune system just a bit goes haywire and creates a lot of inflammation in the lung. If that lung inflammation is not controlled or resolved, it can lead to fibrosis, which is really where some poor outcomes can exist and impaired lung function can result. We believe that Fsofitamod by binding to neuropilin 2, again, involved in that inflammation response, we believe it dampens the immune response and then therefore restores the immune balance and uh, can result in a stabilized lung. We recently, about a year ago, announced um, positive data from a phase 1b2a study in pulmonary sarcoidosis, which really demonstrated that Fsofitamod was safe and well tolerated. There was a strong suggestion of efficacy with uh, dose response and positive trends of uh, efficacy across multiple endpoints. Um, we saw some clinically meaningful symptom improvements and uh, control of inflammatory biomarkers as well. A little bit about that study uh, to set up some discussion around, around what we saw it was a phase 1b2a study in 37 patients with pulmonary sarcoidosis. It's a 24-week study which entailed uh, six monthly doses of Fsofitamod, testing doses 1, 3, and 5 milligrams per kilogram. And the study in incorporated a forced steroid taper where patients had to be stably managed on uh, more than 10 but less than 25 milligrams of daily steroid in order to participate. And we actually tapered their steroids to 5 milligrams by week 8 and then uh, followed their, their results to the end of the study. The primary endpoint was safety since it was a 1B2A study, but we also assessed um, additional uh, efficacy endpoints. Um, here you can see the study schema where we actually demonstrated that uh, steroid taper uh, by week eight. Um, we made a protocol amendment that if week by, by week 16, if patients were stably managed, uh, the principal investigator was able to attempt to actually taper their steroids to zero. So what did we see? So a little bit about the baseline demographics of the patient population, um, largely balanced. We didn't have too many concerns there. The two things we'll point out is that we saw a slight imbalance, although these are small numbers of uh, more African-American patients in the Fsofinimod treatment groups. African-Americans are known to have more severe disease in the sarcoidosis um, area. And additionally, we saw a greater number of patients in the placebo group on background immunomodulators, which were uh, permitted in the study as long as they remained stable and just could have uh, contributed to some slight uh, increase in performance in the placebo there. And we will be controlling for those things in the next study. Um, the primary endpoint of that study was safety. Uh, we really checked all the boxes here. We saw uh, no, no new safety concerns with repeat dosing, no immunogenicity, um, no drug-related SAEs, and we really feel like we have a good safety profile to continue on. Um, one of the uh, key areas of assessment that we, we were looking to evaluate considering that steroid taper uh, design was the reduction in steroid for those receiving Fsofitamod compared to placebo. And we were very pleased and um, 
uh, saw some outstanding findings in the higher dose of exofitamod groups. Um, additionally, we uh, saw some nice response in the three milligram per kilogram group and five milligram Kilo, per kilogram group, but notably in that high dose group, we saw a 58% overall re steroid reduction from baseline and 22% relative reduction compared to placebo in the post taper period. Again, in that high dose group, uh, we actually saw that uh, 33% of the patients were actually able to taper their steroids to zero milligrams uh, by the end of the study. So we really uh, saw these as some unexpected and outstanding findings that in some of the patients in the high dose group, we were able to um, eliminate their steroid use. Some additional um, assessments we were looking at are more on the physiologic side is a forced uh, vital capacity or FVC, which is measured and present predicted compared to placebo. Um, we were really hoping to just maintain lung function in terms of making sure that it didn't get worse as patients um, removed some of that steroid. And we were quite pleased to see that we actually saw um, an increase in 2.8% uh, uh, and 3.3% in uh, present predicted FVC at week 24 compared to placebo. And when you look at that over the duration of the study, um, here you can see that patients had a steady uh, improvement in their lung function with the dark green line representing five milligram per kilogram epsofitamod and the blue line representing the three milligram per kilogram group kind of had a nice steady improvement over the duration of the study. And um, uh, those on placebo, uh, a stark decline. You also note that, uh, you know, placebo didn't, or the one milligram per kilogram dose didn't really perform very well here against the higher doses. And we kind of view that as perhaps a, a sub-therapeutic dose. Um, one of the final things that we'll mention here about the, the, the 1B2A study, uh, we really saw um, some nice symptom improvements. These are patient reported outcomes for things like cough, fatigue, shortness of breath, and then some uh, sarcoidosis symptom scales, the King sarcoidosis score for lung and general health. Uh, again, here, these are the doses compared to placebo. Everything there in green that you see highlighted uh, was beyond the clinically meaningful improvement difference based on the published literature. So those improved are um, clinically meaningful to uh, patients and providers. And again, the exciting findings here is that these symptom improvements are in the context of removing and reducing steroids. So we're really showing that um, exofinamide could potentially have some impact of quality of life while you remove those steroids. Finally, we did evaluate um, epsofinamide on some of the inflammatory biomarkers. These are those that sarcoidosis experts view as important. And what's notable here is that while removing steroid, which tends to be kind of a broad um, system, uh, anti-inflammatory, um, we were able to control some of those inflammatory biomarkers, but not actually over, overly suppress them. Based on these findings, um, which support advancement into further study. We aligned with the FDA on a phase three uh, study design, which um, is currently active. We have multiple centers in uh, the US open for enrollment and actively screening patients. And this will be a global pivotal uh, phase three study. A little bit about that study, it's a phase three randomized double blind placebo controlled uh, multi-center study. We will be uh, targeting enrollment of 264 patients. Uh, we discussed with the FDA to continue to test two doses of Fsofitamod, the three and the five, uh, based on their recommendation that we did see some positive effects with the three milligram dose in addition to the five in the last study, and it was worth uh, warranting uh, continuing to investigate. We will have 88 patients assigned to each, uh, each arm of those. And uh, rather than a 24-week study, it will be 52, with the primary treatment period being 40 weeks. So patients will receive uh, 12 monthly doses of Fsofitamide. Um, this study also will include a forced steroid taper compared to the last study where we reduced steroids to five milligrams by week eight. We'll have a longer taper period, which will be 12 weeks, but we are actually forcing all patients to try to get to zero milligrams of steroid in the first 12 weeks of the study to follow them after. The major efficacy endpoints that we'll be looking at will be the primary endpoint will be change in baseline in mean daily steroid use in the post taper period and then secondary endpoints will be change in fvc additional measures of steroid reduction and change from baseline in the king sarcoidosis uh, lung questionnaire at the end of the 48 week study um, 
These uh, primary and secondary endpoints were discussed and negotiated with the FDA, and they are aligned that the uh, steroid reduction and change in reduction of steroids is the most clinically meaningful endpoint uh, in this patient population to patients and providers. Some of the uh, inclusion criteria for the study, you know, largely the same as the 1B2A. Uh, the notable change will be um, uh, we will permit patients to enter this study on a minimum of 7.5 milligrams daily steroids. Um, until a maximum of 25 milligrams. Uh, this change will help support our enrollment and encompass for different steroid use in different uh, uh, populations um, outside of the US and Europe and Japan. Uh, additionally, um, we'll be monitoring and evaluating that KSQ lung score for entrance, and patients will have to have a KSQ lung of less than 70 to enter. And additionally, because we believe uh, exofitamod works in the inflammatory form of this disease or the inflammatory stage of the disease pathology, uh, we'll work to exclude any of those patients that might have a bit too much um, fibrosis. So those uh, with more than 20% of the uh, fibrosis will, will not be able to participate. We, we really view this as enrichment criteria that will help home in on the um, patient population that could potentially most benefit from exofitamod. Here is just a representation of the study schema in terms of showing that um, three three arm um, trial design with a 12 week steroid taper and uh, evaluating that primary endpoint at week 48 and the final follow up visit at week 52. And again, looking for this to be a large global pivotal phase three study in the US, Europe, and Japan with the roughly 68 centers in 10 countries um, in the US and then major markets in Europe, mostly Western Europe. And then our partner, Kirin, will be joining our study and uh, controlling operations in Japan. So when we think about ATIRE and how we are making progress on this new path to medicine, we have a clinically validated platform of proprietary biology. Lead candidate Efsofitamod has a novel mechanism of action for fibrotic lung disease, a favorable safety profile, proof of concept in pulmonary sarcoidosis that supports advancing that program and potentially expanding to other ILD with unmet need. Um, from a regulatory standpoint, there's um, a designated need, orphan drug designated for sarcoidosis and scleroderma, fast track for pulmonary sarcoidosis and ILD associated scleroderma. We have recently initiated this phase two EFSAFIT study in pulmonary sarcoidosis and we're phase two ready in other ILD. And again, beyond EFSAFITAMOD, a working pipeline in the areas of cancer and immunology. And finally, well capitalized with that roughly $90 million as the end of last quarter. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about ATIRE. And now I will um, talk a little bit more uh, based on some of the questions that, that we have received from our audience here. So one question around, um, can you provide some additional color around the extensive patent portfolio? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the patent portfolio is really covering um, multiple of these uh, splice variants and fragments from these 20 tRNA synthetases that we have in their in, that we have in our body and just view it as like a an IP portfolio that we can kind of draw down from and take some of these different splice variants and fragments, investigate some of the immunomodulatory properties that they might have, and then start to build the patent case based around different disease indications in which we think um, they uh, might warrant further explanation, exploration. And then as it relates to um, specific instances like um, HARS, um, that portfolio uh, is a little bit more curated around looking at things like the orphan drug designation that comes into play that will look to just serve to potentially um, expand the, the runway of that patent exploration. Um, key question that we get quite a bit, uh, 
what are some thoughts on your evaluation and what are the catalysts for um, a revalu revaluation for a tire? So focusing a little bit uh, more on the, the, the valuation, um, you know, we really view it as at this point, um, because this is such a novel area of biology that nobody has really, uh, you know, explored before. It's just taking a little bit more to, you know, get out and provide some additional understanding on tyranny synthetase biology and all the potential and promise that it has. And when we think about Fsofitamod and the valuation, we think that um, the market just needs a little bit more education around uh, pulmonary sarcoidosis and all of the opportunity that we have there. Thank you so much for, for your interest. Happy to answer additional questions you know, offline or please feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, uh, 